we're not terribly optimistic. From the perspective of investors, the way we frame it is this, right? So are you going to get something coming out of this meeting that tells you that you're going to uh, you're sort of meaningfully closer to something that's going to de-escalate trade tensions. In a year where, you know, going into 2019, we already expect that there's going to be a meaningful growth slowdown because of fiscal stimulus rolling off and trade tensions, if you believe the IMF could take another one percentage point off of GDP. And per our estimates on the S&P 500, could take another one to one and a half percent off of net income. So whether or not there's kind of a temporary pause here is less important than did something come out of the communication that tells you there was tangible, credible progress on the key sticking points around SOEs and industrial policy? We're not optimistic that's going to happen. I think these are very big issues that take a long time to sort out. And therefore, the gravitational pull, right. whether or not there's a pause, is towards further escalation. The EU is actually a, a pretty good analog here where you didn't address those sticking points, even though Trump and Juncker shook hands on it. And now we're back to talking about auto tariffs again. Um, Here's a question for you. Do you believe that going into this meeting, I assume that both of these guys, meaning, meaning President Xi, President Trump, have briefing books. There's a, there's a plan. This is what I can offer. If he offers this, I can offer it. Like a little, like, right, there's an agenda here. Can either of them effectively pull an audible during one of these dinners? And actually, or, or is this whole thing just so scripted in advance? No, that's the major risk. The problem here for investors is that President Trump might declare an audible. Um, we have a different take. We think that there's a very good chance for a ceasefire. I think things are set up. They're, they're meeting under the premises of a deal already structured. The Chinese think there's going to be a deal. The U.S., most of the Trump administration is working towards a deal. We know the contours of that deal. And so it's simply going to be up to President Trump to say yes or no at the dinner. I think the chances are he moves forward on it. We see a ceasefire. And I think it is a big deal because none of these, none of these issues are going to be settled in the short term, none of them. However, if you have a ceasefire, that is a major uh, pivot point. A ceasefire and an agreement that you're not going to raise tariffs to 25% in January or raise exactly. it to the rest no of the Exactly. No more tariffs, no more tariff escalation during the, during the yeah. framework negotiations, which will touch on all the big things, IP theft and market access and everything else. But the deal that would come would, would simply be a, a down payment from Xi in return for a, uh, for, for a halt on tariffs. And the reason it's such a big deal is that if it doesn't happen, if we keep going forward, this is very much a binary event. You will have a cascade of terrible news for the next two months. You'll have the implementation of the next tariff tranche. You will have a tariff cliff on January 1st. And you will have the next tranche implemented before Lunar New Year. And this is just terrible news for investors. So this is maybe substanceless. I totally agree with that. But this is a major investor investment. But hold on. If this is substanceless, substanceless even, if it, even if they come out and shake hands, how does the market really react? Because it's, I could, I could see, you know, a, a quick pop, and then, and then sort of this moment yeah. where people say, okay, actually, there's going to be remarkable uncertainty still because we really don't know what they're going to do. Although, although, if you remove two major blocks in the same week with Jay Powell's speech earlier this week, and you're not looking at least another couple of months of any additional tariffs getting on, those are like the two biggest issues the market's been complaining about for months. Except that I think that in this case, investors will pull forward. I mean, I think they're just going to go to the end degree on when the, what the tariffs ultimately look like, right? Or no? Yeah, well, okay, so there's a lot of noise, obviously, right? And so I think the, the look through is, did you make any real tangible progress, not just did you have a ceasefire? And if you didn't make any real tangible progress, then I think investors are going to have to continue to worry about that escalation going forward. I don't disagree with the idea that having some type of ceasefire is an important signal, right? It tells you that both sides are still talking and they're committed to talking, but it doesn't tell you that they're any closer on those really substantial sticking points. In some ways, there's a real fundamental issue at play here that's really deep, which is, is there a way for very different economic systems to right. trade with each other in a way that they both perceive as, as fair? And so it's good that they're going to keep talking about it. But until that's addressed, I think you're not going to get this kind of lingering risk of further escalation in 2019. Okay, different question. If Apple's a proxy for all of this, do you want to own it right now? Hmm. <laughs> oh, you're asking the wrong guy. Yeah, but on not, that no, one, but, not on a but, fundamental yeah, yeah, yeah. basis or a value basis, but on the basis of here's a company that has made a huge investment both in supply chain and its future in a yeah. country in which we have gone from a cooperative stance to a confrontational one. I mean, I guess I'd say this because there's a supply chain question at the core of that, which isn't just an Apple specific story, right? I think one lesson that companies have learned here is that their supply chains need to be more, a little more diverse. And even if, 
right, we get a pause in escalation here, there are still some costs that have been embedded that don't seem like they're going to come off anytime soon. So all of that is going to, with the cost of moving supply chains, the costs that have already been embedded by the current tariffs, those are things that kind of erode at earnings and support the thesis that Morgan Stanley has, which is that we're going to dip to low single-digit earning growth next year. That's going to continue the way on the markets, whether or not this issue is resolved. Okay, final.